Welcome, my friends. You're listening to the voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, inviting you to join us in prayer today. Let's pray, Pastor. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that we can study your word. Amen. We ask again for the presence of the spirit of the living God yes. to abide with us and to be in us. For you said ye know him, for mm -hmm. he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Mm -hmm. Grant, Father, that we will have understanding. We address our prayer to the heavenly sanctuary where Jesus is a great high priest interceding for us in the most holy place. Amen. Amen. Father, now abide with us and be our divine teacher mm -hmm. and grant that not only we will understand, but our listening audience will also understand the great truths of your word Amen. and choose your word and the commandments of God over traditions of men. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 In the last program, we were dealing with this uh, tradition as my brother just prayed. And can we say, uh, as an introduction of program, the program today, that a tradition could be one of those fermented wine. Yes. Oh, yes. Because that, wine. Yes, yes, yes. That, I say that because we are still presenting to you the, the, the homework, a homework or a challenge that we will be giving you Bible verses characteristic of a woman, a church, or a power that will be Practically making everybody drunk, sleep. Uh, and Jesus himself, in the last program, we were talking uh, Matthew 15. And what I would like you to pick up right in that chapter today, because we need to keep helping our friends in there. Again, our program can be followed through YouTube. And so if you miss a program, you can go through YouTube, Voice of the Tena Gospel which is being presented on the screen. And please, let's keep into uh, joining uh, more and more. I want to see more people joining with us into the campaign, a beautiful campaign. We've been, we hear every day about political campaign, you know, uh, uh, in the news. Well, we have the most important campaign that all of us should be engaging it's on the three angels messages. Yes. Okay. Of Revelation 14. So, Pastor Mary, let's go ahead. And my yeah, brother, we, we were looking Professor at, Jones. We have been looking at this issue. Yeah. Um, and Patrick had just read to us again that they had um, been following traditions. Mm -hmm. And we found out that we were going into the issue about the blind lead the blind, both fall into the what? Ditch. Right. All right. right. We are still on third three on characteristic number three. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. All right, let's go. Let's and keep then he so, so very carefully. He said, okay. do ye not understand yet? Do ye yet? Do not ye yet understand mm -hmm. that whatsoever entereth the mouth goeth into the belly? Because mm -hmm. disciples asked him about to declare the parable in verse 15. Mm -hmm. What did this parable mean about going in the mouth and the belly? And Patrick, can you read verse 6, 17, and 18 for us? 17 says, okay. Jesus is saying, do ye not yet understand yeah. that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly? and is cast out into the draught. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Now, now okay, can, I, can I ask you this? Because mm -hmm. uh, many people take these verses out of context. Yes. And they bring it to use like this. So you see, Jesus himself was saying that we can eat pork, we can eat all kinds of things, lobster, shrimps, whatever. Because it's not what we put inside the belly that contaminated or defiled man. Was Jesus talking about pork no. and, and shrimps? In the, in, and, the, in the context of this, Jesus yeah. is talking about what entered the man. Yeah. And what, what entered, it says, no skin, but those things which it says, do not, do not understand whatsoever entered in at the mouth, mm. into the belly, mm. and is what? And is cast out into the what? Drought. Mm. Drought. Mm. Talking about, in a sense, he's given an, he's given an object lesson about how you, when you eat, mm. you eat and you whatever you eat goes in your mouth, right. 
goes, breaks down, right. digests, and comes out of the drought. Right. Okay? Right. Now listen carefully. Okay. But those things, now so when it, now, now why was that? Because what did the scribes and Pharisees accuse Jesus of? Verse, verse 2 right. says, right. why do your disciples transgress the traditions of right. the elders? Yeah, that's For right. they wash yeah. not their hands hmm. when they eat bread. Mm -hmm. Right. So the issue okay. here was a tradition. Wait a minute. But wait a minute, though. It was tradition for the scribes and Pharisees yeah. to they, they wash their hands before they eat the right. bread. Right, right. So they now, so because they didn't because listen carefully, yeah. because they did not wash their hands when they right. ate the bread, the scribes and Pharisees considered them defiled. Right. Okay. Right, right. okay? They considered them defiled. Okay? And as a result, Jesus addressed him about tradition first. Now he's going back to deal, he gave them a parable, and now he's getting ready to break down the parable to the disciples of what he was, how he was answering the question about the bread and the right. washing right, right. of the hands. Watch carefully. It says here, it says here, but those things which proceedeth out of the mouth come forth from the heart. In other words, it is not the bread because you didn't wash your hands that defiled you. Right. That's physical. Right. Right. What's defiling you is those things which proceed out of the mouth that comes out of your heart. Mm. And the traditions that the scribes and Pharisees had was called the oral tradition. Mm. They read this. They read. First of all, you remember, they read the They read the book of Moses every Sabbath right. Right. in all the synagogues. You remember that. Mm. But at the same time, their, their tradition was also their traditions of how they would run the people, the church policies, and everything else, traditions and customs in that area. They wrote it out. They expounded on it. They passed it off as laws or commandments to the people. And they exalted these laws and commandments above the commandments of God and his word. Can you hold it right there? Mm -hmm. oh, again, think about some traditions that have been by some people, very powerful, trying to put place those traditions above the commandments of God, the commandment mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. That's all it is, to see if, if history repeats. Again, Jesus is not talking over here, please, about, about food, physical food. No. You know, talking about, you know, if we can eat unclean meat or no, this, this is not, no, the context here is yeah. talking about the bread right. being defiled because his right. disciples did not wash their hands. Was, this is what he's was, getting was, at was, here. Was, and he's explaining right. what really defiles a man. Right, okay. Not the bread without washing right. hands. Okay. Right. The food was Pharisaic, Pharisee approved. Right. But the disciples just didn't wash their hands to eat it. Right. And Jesus said that's that just is going out the drought. Doesn't... and. Well, uh, you remember, the food was Pharisaical approved as long as they follow exactly what the Pharisees said yeah. by the tradition. Right. Well, I but should because, say it was biblically approved. Right, biblically. That, but, but it wasn't biblically approved. It was Pharisaical approved in the sense that if they ate it the way they supposed to, yeah. then the Pharisees who watched them right. wouldn't have a problem. Right. Right. But if they ate it anything contrary to what they told them, then the Pharisees, because of their tradition on eating this bread, a certain way could say that they are washed, they're eating bread when I wash hands, they're defiled. That is that is not holy. That is, you know, whatever. Right, you right. can tell that it's self-righteousness. Right. You can tell that it's not shrimp or the unclean meats. Right. Because no. if they were eating those things, right. the Pharisees would have jumped on that right. first before not Maybe washing before, their hands. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yes. So okay, go ahead. So now it says, for out of the heart, how about the mind? Right, right. Proceed of what? Evil thoughts, mm -hmm. murders. Mm -hmm. Now, what's defiling the man? Not the not the not the germs that could be mm -hmm. accumulated mm -hmm. from eating the bread with unwashed hands, mm -hmm. but the germ of evil thoughts of sin, mm -hmm. violating of the law. Watch, mm -hmm. heart proceed of evil thoughts. What are these evil thoughts? Murders, mm -hmm. violation of thou shalt not kill. Adulteries, violation of violating the seventh commandment. Fornication. Violation of the seventh commandment. Thefts, violation of the seventh of this of the eighth commandment. Right? False witness. False witness, all right? Violation of the ninth commandment. And blasphemy is a violation of God's word and what he declares what blasphemy is 
and a, a blasphemy is also a man making himself to be a god, or um, and it, let's break it down a little closer, or men proclaiming to be able to forgive sins, mm -hmm. or men de making, making people look to them like they're gods. Watch carefully. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands, here we go back, now he's answering the question in verse two. Right. It says to eat with unwashing hands, defileth not the man. That's what he's talking about. That's the, that's the context. That's the context. It, it, it called my attention that on the next verse, it says right there, then Jesus went mm -hmm. thanks and departed. Mm -hmm. Remember what he said to the disciple when they came concerned and saying, you know, the Pharisees, the leaders said, were, leave them were, alone. were offended. Jesus put in practice what he said. He left them alone. He departed. That's right. He, he, you know what I mean? Because he departed to Tyre. Right, right. Yeah. He departed. Right. And Tyre and Sidon was right. outside the jurisdiction of Jewry. And then he found over there a true child of God. Right. The God of God. He was a Gentile. But anyway, Gentile that can be a topic for another mm -hmm. day. So now we go back to our characteristics. Yeah, again. please. Okay. Okay. Let's move along. So now we got now we have that <laughs> characteristic. And that was yeah. a very, very, very important one, but it's yeah, very yeah. deep because it's dealing yeah. with remember, Jesus was uh, was advocating the keeping of, now right away, in Matthew 15, when he talked about honor thy father and thy mother, but it says he, but is he that curse the father and mother shall die, shall die. Patrick, what was you going to say on that earlier? You said, wait to sin is what? Death. Death, because it was a violation of God's law for sin is a violation, transgression of the law. So for a child not to honor his father and mother, they were in transgression of the law and their days could be cut short and they could even be stoned in the Old Testament for doing this or honor, this honor the father and mother. Right, right, but, right, right. But uh, in the New Testament, the penalty is still the same. Yes, yes. And why, but it's just going to come on a more spiritual basis later. God says, vengeance is mine, right. I will repay. repay. That's right. Right, right. Okay, okay so now, let's move along. So, that, so, you, so, you, so now we see, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so wait a minute now, but wait a minute. This is one commandment, right? Yeah. Somebody might say, well, yeah, this is one commandment. That ain't 10 commandments. But what does James 2.10 say? Right quick. James 2.10. Let's lock this yeah. one down. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point. This one. He is guilty of all. Right. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Thou art become a what? Transgressor. Transgressor of the law. So if you break one, you're guilty of all. So when the people are led to break, the children are led to uh, dishonor their parent because of tradition of the scribes and Pharisees, and they said it was a gift. They were already in transgression of the whole law. Yeah, but bring it up to today. All right, if somebody is being so, told, so, wait, forget wait, about wait, this. Wait, 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 before you go there, let's go, let's go to the Ten Commandments now. Let's hold it right there. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, Pastor Barry, go okay. ahead. Okay, so as we as we look at this issue, we can see that we're dealing with traditions, right? Right, right. And we see something most important here. There was one more point I wanted to bring out here. We were talking about, and you you brought it out. I yes. I want to lose the thought. Well, the, 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 one of the uh, reasons why this is important is mm -hmm. because in the context that Matthew oh, 15, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it now, is okay, because okay, of... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Let's go to Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter Because 20. today, today we want to see. Cannot, 
if, if you're guilty, because Jesus is showing you break one, you're guilty right. of all. Right, right. Okay. So I want to see. Right. Is that what we, wait a minute, is, is that what we, do we have a consensus here? Okay, let's see. Do, do, Matthew 15, yes. It's Matthew bringing 15, about the fifth commandment. It's talking about the fifth commandment. Right. Matthew 15, talking about the fifth commandment, right? Right. right. And right. if you break that commandment, are you guilty of just breaking that commandment and the rest of the commandments are intact? Are you guilty for breaking all according to James? James according says, to James 2, 10 through 12, that my brother just read it before the break. Yes, you'll be guilty of all of them. Now, according the to Matthew 15, what led to what would lead the young people to dishonor their parents and think they can get away with it? The tradition of the Pharisees. The tradition of the Pharisees. So today, is it possible? that people are dishonoring God's law and believing they're going to get away with it and be saved in the kingdom of God yeah. while willfully breaking the law based off the traditions of churches church leaders. and church leadership and policies. Wow. That's deep. And I think it will be easy to understand, I think, the way you, you're putting it, putting it out. Because, again, we... we we, we are not going to say what church or what church No, we're not, we're not we, in that. We, we, we're just we general, to the Bible. general. Now, the Bible then told us that there's a problem with a just falling one. tradition over right. the one commandment. Just one. That's right. But you break one, you're guilty of all. Right. So let's go to Exodus and read the Ten Commandments. And let's just see. Okay. Let's just see what if we're breaking one. Okay. Let's go there. I just want to see. Okay, okay. And we're going to find out how and how that one has been replaced. Hey, by the way, by the way, I, I know we want to continue with this, but in the same 28 pages, we're going to come to a section how the Ten Commandments were written in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. how the Ten Commandments were on the New Testament, and how it has been changed by tradition. But let's go, let's, let's, let's look at Exodus 20. Yeah, okay, let's just go. Ca just in case you can't see the newspaper, you got your Bible, you can look at it right here in your Bible with us. And many of, many of our friends out there, um, they have, they have been calling for this paper. They just, we're just helping you out to open up the appetite to go through and read it. If you threw it away, call back. We'll send it to you again. Go ahead, Brother Patrick. Don't worry, if you throw it away, you better pray. <laughs> I know. Because Before you, they because, do because, it, because God will hold you accountable for rejection of light, of truth, yeah. of truth for this time. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, "What ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." Yeah. And if the Son, who is also truth, shall make you free, you should be free indeed. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you understand this. It is not because we're trying to bombard you with Sabbath. No. We're trying to bombard you with. We're trying to help you understand the truth of God's word versus because, tradition, versus tradition, right. custom, mm -hmm. and traditions are abroad today. But God's word is above custom and it's above tradition. Amen. Remember what Jesus says, in vain you worship me. Jesus. Placing tradition above the commandments That's of right. God. Let's take a look. Let's yeah. look at the commandments of God. Yeah. Let's Go just see. I want you to see. All Let, right? Let's see which one is the one that have been replaced by tradition. Okay. Let's see which ones have been replaced oh, well, by tradition. More than one, oh boy. More than one. We might, be in, some, we might we, have to see. We might be in deeper trouble than I might thought. But I want you to see. But first of all, let's settle this first of all. Again, does God change? No. No, of course not. Does God change? I no. need to know that. Does God change? I need to know. Uh, the I Bible the Lord, says, I change Malachi. Okay, let's, let's, find the let's find the text on that first. Let's, let, because when, I, when we read this law... Is because we understand the character of God. Amen. So does God change? Let's take a look at one. Oh, please read it. Three six, the first For one. For I am the Lord, I change not. Okay. Malachi 3 verse Wait a minute. Six. I am the Lord and I change what? Not. 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 Okay, so God, God does not change. And he's talking. He, he is the one that is talking. He's right. So Speaking so, over here. So God does not change. So let's keep that in mind. Okay. All right. Okay, what's but another one? There's another verse. 23 of number, verse 20. Chapter 23, verse 20. Numbers 23 and verse 20 says, yes. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Okay, has he blessed what, he, according to the Bible, what God, God has blessed since creation? Genesis 2, verse 1 through 3. 2 and 3. 
Yeah, that's a good one. Genesis 2, verse one, two, one, uh, one to three. Verse, yeah. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all the work which God created and made. So wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What did he bless after the creation? Uh, right the, there? The seventh day. Uh, right? The seventh day. Sabbath. The seventh day. Sabbath. He blessed it. Yes. What else did he do? He did three things. Mm -hmm. He made Bless it. He rested. Rested. And he made it holy. He made it holy. Sanctified. He sanctified. 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 Mm -hmm. Meaning he set it aside. Now, was was there any Jew by that no, time? No, there was this is oh, this is for mankind. That's why Jesus would say the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Okay. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So, Mark, so, so again. I, I, again, again, slowly, I need to be reminded. And I, I praise God for the two of you mm -hmm. helping with my all my I try to think to to try to speak too fast. Sometimes thinking not I mean forgetting that I'm not talking in my own language. Mm -hmm. It's English. Okay. Brother Patrick. I'm going to add to that, you know, the things that God makes and he blesses and makes holy. Right. Th then if we touch those things, we become more we holy and sanctified. Amen. That's proved in Ezekiel 20, 20 verse, verse 20. Verse yeah. 12. Oh, 12, too. The same thing. Right? Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified, sanctified them. Amen. So the Sabbath carries God's blessing of sanctity on it. Amen. As we choose to obey God out of love and keep his seventh day from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday. Not Sunday, but sunset Friday to sunset Saturday. And that's a Contrary sign that... Contrary of what the tradition says, Wait a minute, that, yes. that is a legalistic, being a legalist when you keep the seven days out. Okay, now wait a it's minute. It's contrary. Now wait a minute. Let's go where we're close. Because we're dealing with characteristics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, 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 did we have any characteristic that showed that there would be a tampering with God's Law. Yes, or, or according to of, Daniel. According to Daniel. Okay. 725. Okay, now let's read the Ten Commandments yeah. right quick in Exodus. Okay, and then we're going to go to Daniel 725. Okay, okay. Because I want to be sure. Because when the people out here, you have your Bibles. Hopefully. If, you got, if you're watching, you have your Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First commandment. I need you to look at your Bible and turn to Exodus chapter 20, yeah, yeah. verses 1 through, seven, one through uh, 17. Uh, yeah. And I want you to read your Ten Commandments. And then we're going to compare. We're going to see, was it a prophecy that foretold a change? And then we're going to find out, did God ever change? Because we already found out, no. no. So if we're not following God and God didn't change, then who are we following? What are we following? We must be following tradition. We must be following tradition. Mm -hmm. all, right, go all right, so let's take a look. Go ahead, quickly. Because all right, and God, God spake, and, and God spake all these words saying, yeah, yeah. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt never gods before me. First Th commandment. Okay, first commandment. Thou said, Thou shalt not make any graven image of any likeness of anything that's in heaven above, that's in the earth beneath, or that's in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Mm -hmm. Father, Lord thy God, I'm a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation to hate me and show him mercy and thousands that love me and keep my commandments. Second commandment. Second commandment. Yeah. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for right. Lord would not hold him guiltless to take of his name in vain. Right. Third, that's third, third. commandment. All right. The four, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord. Of course, it says, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all them in the is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Fourth commandment. That's fourth commandment. Honor thy father and thy mother the days and belong upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Fifth, fifth, commandment. fifth commandment. That's the same one found in Matthew chapter 15. Right. All right, remember that. Then it says, Thou shalt not kill. Mm. Sixth commandment. Six. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Seventh. Seventh. Thou shalt not steal. Eight. Eight. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's no, wife. No. Nine. No. Nine. No. Yep. Thou shalt no. not bear no. false witness. Right. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Ninth commandment. Ninth commandment. Yeah. And number 10. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that's his name. Ten. So the ten. Mm -hmm. According to the Bible. So wait a minute, this the, is the, ten the, commandments. See, according to the Bible. Ten commandments. Okay, ten. According to the Bible. Right. 
This is the command. Any Bible. Now was, Je- now, was Jesus referring to this in Matthew chapter 15? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. What, what command? Fifth uh, commandment. The fifth. The fifth command. Right. And he said, if you break one, you break in James, one. you're guilty of what? Oh. Oh. Okay? So now, that commandment dealt with your father and mother, which was the last six. No, no, wait a minute. How do we know that James was talking about where Jesus, we know that it was talking about the 10th commandment, well, the, go the back, baby, go, back, to, the, go the back to James honor 2. Honor that father and mother. Go, verse 11. Back, verse 11 they, says. They, wait, wait, wait. The reason I bring this is because I always, the argument come back to me and says, okay, are you going to tell me that you are, you need to obey then the 630 laws which was found in the book of the Jewish people? We are not no. talking that we are not talking about we're talking about the Ten Commandment okay. law. How do we law know that James? How do we know that James was talking about? Be, the because Ten James says right here in James okay. chapter 2, verse right. 9, okay. it says, If you have respected persons, okay, and you commit sin. Well, let's go closer. Verse right. 10, whosoever shall keep the whole law. Right. Yet offend at one point. Now, how do we know it's the Ten Commandments? Look at verse 11. For he said, Do not commit adultery. Uh-huh. That's the seventh commandment. Right. Also said, do not kill. That's the that, that, sixth, that's sixth command. commandment. Right. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, okay. thou art become a transgressor right. of the law. That's how we know we're talking about the Ten Commandments. Amen. Amen. I, I, I want to bring this, the right context to the people. Mm-hmm. So when they read it, they cannot be drunk, confused, asleep with the people. Now, now, now that we have that, yeah, but you now, know now did God prophesy? Did the word of God prophesy yes. that someone, some entity, would think to change God's law? Yes. Unfortunately, our time is up today. You will have to tune in next time, the same station, same time. And we will continue presenting to you, our dear brethren and friends out there, with this homework. We're just trying to Open up your appetite so you can read it and make a blessing of all. Tis a promise most cheering, but we know. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel. P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today.